Joshua here from Delisle Designer Blacksmith. Today I am actually restoring some gates that I made, uh, particularly the, the most famous ones I did in Richmond Park in London. I'm not going to go into too much details on how they get, got damaged. It wasn't to do with me, I assure you. But um, I've got to make remake these, my, uh, my uh, oak leaves. Luckily, I kept an example. Woo! So these are hand forged. They've got each got two leaves and an acorn. It's the system that I created, and these are fire welded together and absolutely solid. So they shouldn't break easily. But if you're dropping a couple of ton on them, then they will. So I've got five of these sets to create. Um, so that's an equal to ten leaves and five acorns. So I've got all the tooling that I used to create it, and it will be a nice insight into how I created those gates in the first place. If you ever want to visit them, they're in Richmond Park on the edge of Sidmouth Woods, opposite Pembroke Lodge. Uh, so at Pembroke Lodge, there's King Henry's Mound, which is the highest point in London, and that has a vista all the way to St. Paul's Cathedral. It's about a 10 mile vista. And my gates are right within that vista as an artistic representation for the view. So if ever you're having a visit to Richmond Park, I thoroughly recommend you go and see my gate. But uh, I'll be over there soon to actually restore them, so I'll keep you updated on the progress. So let's begin. You'll notice I've already skipped ahead and I've already created a leaf on the end of this bar. So I'm going to use this tool to cut the leaf off. The helpful part is that it's left me with a nice little point on the end for starting the next leaf. So this interesting tool is for forging the stems of both leaves and acorns. So essentially I'm forging a round taper part way down the bar using the negative space of the tool. And so like forging a normal taper, you would start square, then knock the corners off to become octagonal, and continue to knock the corners until it's round. So the section that I've left on the end of that stem, I'm now going to flatten on its corners until it's the same thickness as the stem itself. So this creates like a flattened hexagon with tapering sides. Now for the fun part of creating the profile of the oak leaf. So this tool is a variation of a ball punch and it's basically, I'm using it like my thumb, as though it was plasticine. I'm digging that thumb in there and pushing the metal out to form those lovely curvy shapes. So after a quick shaping on the anvil bick, it's then a repeat of the process all over again. Let's see that again, it's super speed. Shall we have a look at the tools? So here's what I mean by the negative space. See that shape? It won't forge anything past and it'll always forge on that angle. As we can demonstrate, there, see, so you turn it around in there, and it connects it in, producing a leaf. And then I've chopped it off using this tool. I've made this uh, very simple little shoe with some box section on the ends, and that enables it to just slot in there at an angle, see in the corners section of those, so I mean by a right angle triangle. So the way I created that shape, so first of all I made this tool and all I did there was I uh, followed in a square bar which gave me that half a square bar. So I mean at an angle and then every time I forged a piece of steel back into there it became a right angled triangle. So to finish these leaves we're going to chisel in the vein details. Okay, so let's now forge all the acorns out of the round bar. 
So back to my tool to forge the profile of the acorns and then back on the other side to forge the stems. Until we end up with a very basic profile. So that profile has the right amount of metal to fit this next tool called a top and bottom die which will finalise the shape of the acorns. Okay, so some of these have come out pretty good. Wow, lovely. Others have got a little bit of excess metal on them. Uh, just because I overestimated how much I needed very slightly. Uh, so I'll just take that to the belt sander and just crisp them all up. Same goes for the uh, oak leaves, these little points on the end. I like to take those off. And then we'll get ready for fire welding. to fire welding actually tack the pieces together using an arc welder that holds everything together whilst I'm welding it in the fire. So now these are all together the last thing I'm going to do is put them in the vise and shape them and give them a bit of movement using the oxypropane kit. So I've shaped them all up now and given them a bit of a bit of life. And I've welded these just these little simple loops on the end because when they get dipped in molten zinc, they'll tie them with wire. And where the wire is, there's normally gunk and everything. So, and I'm going to be chopping the the ends off anyway to de-prep them for welding. So it just keeps the rest of it nice and clean. So should you be interested, I've actually made quite a lot of these little acorns, and they'll be perfect as a little keychain holder thingies, you know, on your keys. So my Etsy shop should pop up round about now. Bing! If you're a blacksmith and you're thinking, yes, I would like to make my own. Okay, well, you can still buy one of these and what you can do is get it case hardened. You can buy case hardening compound pretty cheap these days and uh, use this to then make your own die for the power hammer or Smith & Striker die. It doesn't have to be a power hammer. You could have big brawny friends and they can um, do all the power hamming for you. So look, see, you basically get those two bits of metal really hot, sandwich this in between, smack it down together, and that leaves the empty negative space of the acorns. Do subscribe and stick around for some more, as I will be next in the next episode, which I'm going to try and do every week. Yeah, get something routine going. So every Friday evening I will upload something. Uh, so in the pipeline I've got a full-size horse head sculpture. I've got uh, some new forges that I'm building that you too could own. And uh, I'm going to be doing more uh, One Heat Wonder challenges. To watch me attempt to do certain elements in a single heat uh, and to prove efficiency and methods to increase your forging skills and also set me challenges, you know, do comment, set me, um, tell me what you want to see, what you want to know um, and yeah, give me some challenges and see if you can do them too and let me know how you get on. So take care, happy forging and see you next time.